Though they sit on different hemispheres, the land of Israel and the state of California are similar in many ways. Israel is nestled between the 30th and 33rd latitudes, parallel with the region between Los Angeles and northern Baja California. Both areas are mountainous, and yet they also border a major body of water. Both have inland areas that sit well below sea level, the Dead Sea in Israel, and the Salton Sea in California. They share similar vegetation and climate. Both regions get the majority of their water supply from the snow-packed mountains in the north. Often, we hear someone from California visit Israel and say, it felt just like home. And yet, when it comes to placing ourselves in the story of Jesus' birth, we are confronted with barriers to the imagination. Though our natural worlds remain similar, our modern world feels vastly different from the experiences of Mary and Joseph, of Zechariah and Elizabeth, of angels and shepherds and wise men. Different cultures, different expectations, different experiences, different technology and resources. It can be hard to see things through their eyes. Sometimes I wonder, does the story of Jesus' birth feel distant and unapproachable? Has it taken on the air of a children's story or mythology, like it happened a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away? Consider this. Mary and Joseph lived under the oppressive rule of a foreign power. While their local leaders had some authority, true power resided far away in Rome. This oppression plays a critical role in the Christmas story. It was Roman decree that put Mary and Joseph on their journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem to register for the census. Do you ever wonder if they had conflicting emotions about it? On one hand, they'd both been convinced of God's purpose for their soon-to-be newborn son. On the other hand, by unjust human decree, they were forced far from home in the final stages of a pregnancy. They found themselves caught in the balance between the will of heaven and the realities of a broken world. This year of 2020 has been unlike any in recent memory. A global disease has upended our routines, our freedoms, and in some cases, our very lives. It weighs heavy on all of us, no matter how we feel about the disease or the way it's been managed by authorities. While it's safe to say that none of us would want to go through this year again, what if there's an opportunity to understand Christmas in a new way? What if this sense of oppression and uncertainty could be an opportunity to surrender our confidence in ourselves and place our trust again fully in God and the promise of a coming Savior? What if, in this season, like the psalmist, we again lifted our eyes to the hills and asked, from where does my help come? Might we answer, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Underneath the starry sky, a mother holds a child tonight. All is calm and all is bright She sings to him a lullaby Gloria He 
was born to give them second in our COVID lockdowns, I taught a message at our church entitled, Don't Waste This Trial. Realizing that so often our response to trials end up shaping our character and defining us more than anything else. If you think about it, any major world event, what do people ask? Where were you at? What were you doing? Or more importantly, how did you respond? How did you respond? We still celebrate today how so many volunteers ran towards the World Trade Center rather than away from it. Or during Hurricane Katrina, the sea of volunteers that pitched in rebuilding communities. Or more recent here in California, the tireless effort of firemen that pitched in protecting so many families and homes. How they responded mattered. What I'd suggest though is even more important than how we respond to trials is how we respond to something that comes at us every 12 months. How we respond to Christmas. Why do you think that matters? It matters because every single one of us at the end of our days will give an account for how we responded to this annual holiday. How we responded to God making the decision to come down to rescue us. You see, our choice to go our own direction and go our own way left us separated from God and heading towards eternal judgment. But in his kindness, he intervened. Jesus came down, lived the perfect life, died as a sacrifice for each one of us, taking our place on a cruel Roman cross. And by simple faith, each one of us can call out to him and embrace his rescue, acknowledge our sin, ask him to lead and our, direct our life moving forward. As I think through 2020, as we finish up the year, that's my prayer for each one of us, that we wouldn't waste Christmas. Even in these moments, as you're listening to this, you can call out to him. I'll tell you what, if you run towards him this Christmas rather than away from him, your life will never be the same. Your eternity will be redirected. God bless you. Merry Christmas. <laughs>